So this is going to be the first video in my series where I break down the different devices in Reason. This, this video is going to be about the ReadROM, and this is going to be a part one uh, where I just do a super basic rundown of how to use the ReadROM just to get you started. Um, and then in the next part of the ReadROM, we'll get into more advanced stuff and explain what each individual thing on the ReadROM does to get a more advanced understanding. So to start out, um, the reed drum is a style of drum machine um, that that was very popular, particularly uh, because of the TR-808 and the TR-909, which were uh, hardware drum sequencers. Um, here we have the TR-808. Um, it has a very similar look, this, this 16 um, button sequencer. Uh, with different uh, different samples that you could select from and set a sequence for. Uh, we also had the TR-909, which is the sort of newer version of it. Uh, different samples, but the same general sort of idea. So slightly different layout as well. Um, but to get back to the uh, redrum, we have a very similar sort of look. We have these 16 buttons, um, and this is how we sequence. So um, if I hit run, you can see this light moving across. And this basically uh, is our indicator at, of the sequence going through its cycle. So it's currently 16 steps, so we'll go through these 16 um, every bar. Um, and so right now I have this kick drum selected. Uh, and now I can start clicking in these buttons, and it will start laying down a rhythm. So now we just have a kick, uh, that's good, but we want to start layering these sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and select my next sample, the snare drum, and I'm going to select uh, 5 and 13 to get a basic rhythm going. And we're just going to keep layering these on until we get a, a rhythm that we're happy with. So on this clap. So this clap sample goes on a little bit longer than I want, so I, I want to tighten it up, so I'm going to shorten the length a bit. Um, and moving on, uh, I'll add some cowbell. This is these are 808 samples. Um, I'm sure you've heard of these before because they've been used in dance music forever, <laughs> um, and very famous. So uh, I I don't really think that sounds that much like a cowbell, but it's the TR808 cowbell, and it's I'm sure you've heard it somewhere. So, anyways. I'll add some Morocco on that. So yeah, this is basically how we build up a drum sequence. Um, we have a couple different options. We can change the sort of speed that goes through the sequence with this resolution knob. Uh, we could even do triplets if we wanted. Um, and this will always be synced up with uh, the, the click of our track. So if I go ahead and play. That's one of the advantages of a sequencer is because it's going to be locked into your tempo. So we'll always uh, match up with the grid. So we have that. Um, uh, you can go all the way up to 64 steps, uh, but it becomes more challenging to, to program in the sequence that you want. Because once you be go beyond 16, you'll notice, well, I only have 16 buttons. Uh, so you need to start shuffling through the different areas, um, the the, sam the steps select knob um, to get 17 through 32, uh, 33 through 48, and 49 through 64 to program in your sequence um, if you have it greater than 16. So, anyways, um, you don't you don't have to get into that. I I, I don't usually go beyond 16 uh, steps when I'm doing my sequence. Um, because if you want some variation, you can use this this pattern, uh, or you could co copy it to track. We'll talk about that later. So we have a basic sequence. Uh, I actually have two other sequences. Uh, this first one is actually very similar to the one that we just made. Um, you have a total of 32 different patterns that you can do. 
you could bank A, 1 through 8, bank B, 1 through 8, bank C, 1 through 8, um, and bank D, 1 through 8. 2 is a different pattern. Um, and uh, we, yeah, I mean, that's the basics of it. Uh, we have things like shuffle to add a little bit of shuffle into the uh, sequence that we program. And we also have this hard soft medium, which allows us to have velocity values set for the different um, values that we put in. Um, I, I think I'm gonna include, conclude this part for now. Um, because I want to keep this very simple and just so that you can get going on the redrum. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about before I leave for this part is the fact that you can play these and actually record this onto your track. Um, so I don't actually want this to run right now because I want to be playing it manually. So I'll, I'll unselect the Enable pattern selection in the in the pattern, so now I can't hit the run button. And if you go to C1, C1 will be my first sample, and then going chromatically up, it will go through my different samples that I have. So if I wanted to record something down, uh, then I could hit record, and then play it on my keyboard or whatever. Uh, and it'll actually be in my sequencer. So um, I don't know, that's pretty much it for now. Hopefully you got something out of it. And stay tuned for the next part for a more advanced look at the redrum. Thanks.